Hashem Hashem Naseh V'Natzliach I welcome you today to another journey to discover the Creator Himself. Now throughout the years I've tried and Bo Hashem have succeeded in waking up many people to see the Creator through His creation, through their lives. But many people continue to ask questions of if there is a signature of the Creator signature of God in the creation. The truth be told, the best signature is you. The best signature and evidence and proof that the Creator runs the world is your own life. Why? Just look at your life. You're one walking miracle. But we don't appreciate those things because we've gotten used to them. Just like someone doesn't get impressed by rain simply because they've seen it so many times. But if someone were to be in a cave for many years and for the first time in their life walk out and see that there are tricklets of water dropping on their head, they'll be fascinated like no other. Same thing like if you saw, for example, blue rain for the first time in your life. This would be fascinating to you, but after the 10th, 20th, or 30th time, you'd get used to it and think it's normal. The biggest issue that we have today in the world is ignorance. Most people ask questions but don't work hard enough to find those answers. And because the times are of the essence, we have to do as much as we possibly can to put all of the information on a silver platter for you so you can once and for all recognize the Creator in the creation, identify that there is only one Creator, there is only one document called the Torah that testifies to this Creator in such a way where you know that it must have been something that was created by the Creator itself. And most importantly, that you have to listen to the rest of what it says. And before you make any big decisions, let's start the journey by thanking our dear friend, Yosef Sebag, the physicist, electrical engineer, and most importantly, Tommy Chacham, to put most of the information together over the years of study of Torah and sciences in such a way that it makes the most difficult ideas simple to understand. The big question is, did the creator of the universe attach his signature to nature? Modern science has unlocked many of the mysteries of the universe. We've probed the atom, studied the cell, and peered out to the far edges of the observable universe. And surely, if such a signature exists, we should have found it by now. Now let's examine, before we can recognize the signature of God, what we're actually looking for. Most importantly, we need to know the name of God. Now, the Torah reveals to us that the primary name of God is the Tetragrammaton. According to sources such as Sharek Dusha, Part 4, Gate 3, this name encompasses everything. It's known as the Shema Etzim, or the essence name of God. The Tetragrammaton is spelled by the four letters Yud, He, Vav, and He. The latter three letters, the He, Vav, and He, spell the word Hove, which means present in Hebrew, while the first letter, the prefix Yud, indicates future tense. Thus, the meaning of the Tetragrammaton is that God is ever present, meaning He's eternal was, is, he always will be. It also connotes that God is constantly creating the present. He is the underlying source of all existence in the universe. And now that we know God's name, let's see if we can find a signature in nature. The universe can be divided into four major areas. The first is the container of everything, meaning space-time. Second is the law of physics, which govern how things work. Third, the matter and energy contained within space. And lastly, the fourth, life itself. Perhaps you already started seeing one signature of God, which the four major areas parallel with the four letters of the Tetragrammaton. Now let's now examine each of these four areas and see if this persists. Four-dimensional space-time. The primary way to interpret our world is four-dimensional space-time meaning that there are three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. If you want to specify the location of something, you need to know all four dimensions. 
Some physicists theorize that there are more dimensions. This is known as string theory. But these are theoretical extra dimensions that are smaller than atoms and impossible to observe. The highest number of dimensions scientists are willing to postulate for the time being is 26 dimensions, 25 of space, 1 of time. This is known as the bosonic string theory. Note the magic number 26. This will repeat throughout this journey. In any case, for all practical purposes from a human perspective, there are four dimensions, three of space, one of time. And according to our holy Torah, what counts is the human perspective. Since man is the reason for creation, and from a human perspective, there are four dimensions. Perhaps we can see that the four primary dimensions of space-time correspond to the four letters of God's name, the tetragrammaton that we discussed. The yud equals time dimension. The he, vav, and he are three spatial dimensions. As before, the letter yud as a prefix connoting the future, meaning time, while the he, vav, and he mean present in Hebrew, connoting the frame of existence, meaning space. Here is one possible instance of God's signature. Laws of Physics According to scientists, as quoted by Wikipedia, the fundamental forces of physics which shape our universe are four. Gravitational, electromagnetic, strong nuclear, weak nuclear. These are said to be fundamental forces because they don't appear to be reducible to more basic interactions. Again, we have that number four. Perhaps these four are parallel to our four letters of the tetragrammaton. Next, we look at the basic arithmetic operations. The laws of physics are governed by purely mathematical statements. There are four fundamental mathematical operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Again, we have that number four. Note that multiplication is repeated addition only for integers. Beyond that, it gets more complicated. Let us now look at the content of the universe, the mass energy content from a human perspective. States of matter. Scientists quoted by Wikipedia say that four states of matter are observable in everyday life. Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma, and stars and lightning. Though there are some other exotic states of matter, but as from before, our human perspective is the most critical, so these are the states we encounter. Note again the number four. Four particles of matter energy. From a human perspective, the number of particles we encounter in our daily lives are four. All matter we interact with is made up of atoms which differ only by a number of protons, electrons, and neutrons they contain. According to Wikipedia, the atom is the smallest unit of matter that has the properties of a chemical element. The fourth particle we encounter is the photon. So for example, a table or a computer contains protons, neutrons, and electrons, and we observe it visually through photons of light. So too for everything else on our planet. Granted there are other particles inside protons, etc., but we don't encounter them in any way outside the protons. Thus, from our perspective, our human perspective, the number of particles we interact with are four. To quote the physicist's webpage of Keele University, everything you can see, the stars in the sky, your wife, the TV set, the mountain range, the ocean, your boss, your underlings, the dust mites dancing in a ray of light, Everything, and that includes you, consists of atoms and photons. That's it. There is nothing else for non-scientists like you. It's my and my fellow scientists' privilege that on rare occasions, we can also look at things that are different from atoms and photons. But you can go rather far with this gang of four. Of course, there are a lot more elementary particles, but forget them. They're important for us scientists. Some of them we actually use in material science, but they're of no importance for you, for me, in everyday life." End quote. 
Thus, for all practical purposes, from our perspective, there are four particles we encounter in everyday life. And note again the number four. Let us now look a bit at life on our planet. Four spiral arms in our galaxy. For many years it was believed that our Milky Way galaxy has only two spiral arms. But a recent 12-year study using radio telescopes of our galaxy has revealed that it actually has four spiral arms. Again, that number four. The fourth body in the solar system. Our planet is the fourth major body in the solar system. Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Earth. Again, that number four. Four layers of the atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere has four primary layers. The troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. There is also an extremely low density exosphere above 700 kilometers, but some scientists don't consider it part of the atmosphere. It's basically a transition area between the edge of the atmosphere and the outer space. Again, the number four shows up. Four continuous land masses. How many major land masses are there on our planet? You guessed it. Wikipedia quoted here. A continuous area of land surrounded by ocean is called a landmass. Landmasses include supercontinents, continents, and islands. There are four major continuous landmasses on Earth: Afro-Eurasia, the Americas, Antarctica, and Australia. End quote. Four kingdoms. Everything on our planet can be divided into four kingdoms: the inanimate, plant, animal, and humans. Inanimate objects are not alive. Plants and bacteria grow and reproduce. Animals also have consciousness and will. Humans have an abstract intellect and free will, meaning they have a higher level of consciousness. Thus, humans are able to choose to go against their animal side and can also contemplate the world and its creator. DNA is base four. All known life on Earth is highly related using a common base four DNA genetic code. The information in DNA is stored as a code made up of four chemical bases: adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Likewise, all known life on Earth is based on the carbon atom, largely due to its special ability to create four electron bonds with other atoms and repeat this process indefinitely. The biochemist Dr. Michael Denton points out in his book *Nature's Destiny* several examples of the number four appearing throughout molecular biology, and on page 192 he states, "It has often been said." That God is a mathematician. On the evidence of molecular biology, we might add that he is keen on the number four. We could find more examples of the number four in our own physiognomy. One of the most famous Kabbalistic works, the Etz Chaim, in Shalper Ozen Chotim, in Chapter One. Explains that the four windows in our face—the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth—correspond to the four letters of God's name. Man is supposed to be a microcosm of the universe. Likewise, our physical form is comprised of four main parts: head, arms, legs, and body. The Kabbalah describes existence in terms of four levels of the soul and four main worlds. These are said to parallel the tetragrammaton. In our world, known as the Asiya, time is delineated via the four seasons and twelve months. The latter parallel the twelve possible sefirim, the permutations of the letters of the tetragrammaton. There are also four compass directions: north, south, east, and west. Axis of evil. Another sign of the Creator on a 
macroscopic level is the symmetry of the universe around our solar system. The Torah states that the purpose of creation is man. Interestingly, recent studies in the cosmic background radiation permeating the universe have revealed an axis of symmetry. Scientists expected the cosmic background radiation to be randomly distributed. However, they discovered that the axis of symmetry is none other than Earth's equinox plane around the Sun, which means that the entire observable universe is symmetrically around our solar system. Scientists found this very hard to swallow, so they conducted a four-year follow-up study with better technology and more advanced sensors. The results not only confirmed the dual symmetry, but also revealed two additional axes of symmetries around our solar system, namely the quadrupoles and octopoles, where the universe is divided into four quadrants and eight octants. This phenomenon appears to be a very real, and the scientists, academics, and the media are trying to downplay it. It has been called the axis of evil by baffled scientists. Is this yet another hello from the Almighty? Only people that want to see can see it. As to why the symmetry is repeated three times, there's a concept in Halakha, in Jewish law, that when something unusual happens three times, it should not be considered a random occurrence. Now that we've seen many examples of the number four, let us see if the gematria, or the numerical value of the tetragrammaton, appears in nature. The gematria value of the tetragrammaton is 26. The yud is the tenth letter, the he is the fifth letter, vav is the sixth, and the he again is the fifth. Thus, the gematria value of the tetragrammaton is 10 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5, which equals 26. The size of the observable universe. According to Wikipedia, the diameter of the observable universe is 8.8 .8 .8 times 10 to the 26th power meters, meaning 1 with 26 zeros. This number will not change with better telescopes. Scientists calculated it using the speed of light and the theoretical age of the universe since the Big Bang. Again, we see the magic 26, as in 10 to the 26 power meters. Note that we could have used light years and gotten a smaller number. But as before, from a human perspective, the meter is the natural measure to use. It is the standard international unit of measure of length on our planet for most human beings. As before, the universe is built around man from the Torah perspective. So what about the 8.8? .8? Perhaps this is an allusion to the Gematria Ketana of 26, obtained by adding the digits 26, which is 2 plus 6, equaling 8. The number 8 also represents what transcends nature. For instance, the Brit Milah, meaning the circumcision, occurs on the eighth day. Circumcising the organ of reproduction represents that Jewish continuity is above the natural order. According to the natural order, the Jews should have disappeared long to long ago. Yet, somehow, we managed to survive due to the unseen hand of God which intervenes in nature. Big Bang Entropy While scientists argue and theorize, only God knows the veracity of the Big Bang. Our Torah sources say that God created everything with an opening, this gives the possibility of a natural explanation for free will. But even within these openings, there are clear signs that God is behind everything. He's running the show. He always was. He always will be. According to Roger Penrose, the mathematical physicist at Oxford University, the initial state of the early universe had to be in an extremely unlikely configuration for it to exist in a state which can support atoms and life. Now he went through the toil of calculating the odds of this happening by using a black hole model and came up with a staggering 1 in 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123. Now this is an unbelievable number, quite literally. A 
it's not one with 123 zeros, but rather one with 10 to the power of 123 zeros. Multiply 10 by itself 123 times. That's the number of zeros in this number. It's such a huge number that if you were to write it out in a normal form, it would fill out every single book, hard drive, and CD on the planet, and this would still not be enough. Penrose himself said that if you were to put a zero in every atom in the observable universe, it would still fall short of writing this number down. To get a feel for these odds, imagine a combination lock with four, not four numbers to crack, but rather 10 to the power of 123 numbers to crack. Good luck with that one. If we take another look at the number 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123, we also see that 10 plus 10 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 26. This is the numerical value of the tetragrammaton. Yud, He, Vav, and He. Likewise, if we sum all the digits, 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 8, which equals 2 plus 6. To give of 26. Is this another hello from the Almighty? Another small little signature? The sun. The sun is the primary source of energy and heat for life on Earth. According to Wikipedia, it releases an estimated 3.8 times 10 to the power of 26 watts of energy in the form of light and other forms of radiation. The watt is the international standard of measure of power for most human beings on the planet. Note again the number 26 showing up in 10 to the power of 26 watts. The rotation of the sun to the same apparent position as viewed from Earth is 26.24 days, known as the synodic rotation. There are 26,000 years, I mean, this is rounded off, in the precession of the equinoxes, colloquially known as the Great Astronomical Year. The sun is also 26,000 light years away from the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, located at the longitudinal degree of 26 Sagittarius, 26 fundamental constants of the universe. The fundamental constants of the universe describe the strength of all the forces, interactions, and physical properties of everything in our universe. These fundamental constants determine the structure of everything in our universe, from quarks, atoms, electron transitions, to galaxy clusters and stellar explosions. Alter any of these numbers even slightly, the universe would be radically different to us. Most likely, no life of any kind could possibly exist. How many fundamental constants are there? As of now, if we want to describe the universe as simply and completely as possible, it takes no less and no more than 26 dimensionless constants to get us there. 26 Atomic Elements in the Human Body According to the webpage from the Arizona State University Biology Department, Quote, of the elements found in the human body, four of them make up the largest percentage of our body weight, 96.2%. The four elements are oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. On the right are the 11 common elements and their percentage of total body weight. The other essential trace elements, which is less than 0.01%, Boron, cadmium, chromium, cobalt, copper, fluorine, iodine, iron, manganese, molybdenum, selenium, silicon, tin, vanadium, and zinc. Total, you guessed it, 26. 
Note that some biologists add or subtract one or more trace elements to the list. It's not yet fully known which trace elements are essential to life. In any case, the number of essential atomic elements is about 26. Iron. The 26th atomic element is iron. Iron is an essential element uniquely fit for transporting oxygen, the breath of life, in the blood. It gives blood its distinctive red color. The Talmud states that man and woman provide the body while God provides the soul. Perhaps this hints that the soul comes from 26, that is, from God. Interestingly, the human heart has four chambers. Likewise, oxygen, the breath of life, is an atomic number 8, which is the gematric tenal of 26. The oxygen atom also has two electron orbits of 2 and 6 electrons, respectively. Human bones. The human foot is a strong and complex mechanical structure containing 26 bones. The scientific study of 1197 North American adult Caucasian males with a mean age of 35 and a half years found that a man's foot length was 26.3 centimeters with a standard deviation of 1.2 centimeters. Interestingly, the number of bones in our adult bodies is 206, a hint to the 26. Thus, not only do we stand on 26, but it supports our bodies. God. The main English word for the Yud, Hey, Dav, and Hey is God. G, O, and D. G is the seventh letter, O is the fifteenth letter, and D is the fourth letter of the English alphabet. You add these numbers, 7 plus 15 plus 4, 26. Are you surprised? Is this a coincidence yet again? The number pi. In mathematics, the most famous constant is the number pi, which is the ratio of the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. You probably remember it as one of the first calculations learned in school. And since pi goes on forever, we take the first eight numbers and round it off. As before, eight is the gematric tana of the tetragrammaton. The first eight numbers are 3.1415926. Rounding it off, we get pi, which is 3.141593. If you add these numbers, 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 3, what do you get? 26. Notice what number shows up at the exact place we rounded off, pi, 3.141592.6, again, 26. A little bit more math for you. In mathematics 26 is unique in that it's the only, it's the one and only integer which is exactly between a squared number and a cubed number. Namely, 3 to the power of 3 equals 27. 5 squared 25. What's between 27 and 25? There's no other integer besides 26, which is exactly between a square and a cube. 3 cubed, 5 squared. Middle, 26. Notice also that between 3 and 5 is that magic number 4. Interestingly, an article published on Discover by Anna Funk on October 27, 2020 says that the Earth is pulsating every 26 seconds and the scientists can't figure it out why. Every 26 seconds, the Earth shakes. Not a lot, certainly not enough that you'd feel it, but just enough that the scientists on multiple continents get a measurable little blip on their detectors. Now, 
This has been information that's been documented since the early 1960s, with countless scientists trying to figure it out why. But I think that after everything we've learned today, we could all agree that this pulse of 26 is simply a sign from Hashem that He is the heartbeat that gives life to the universe. Final words. Note that this is not to say that we need any kind of signature to see God in nature. The divine wisdom is manifest in everything. Even the tiniest bacteria, even an atom, is an endless wonder and wellspring of bottomless wisdom to those who study it. Go and see how scientists are still unable to fully understand even the simplest bacteria. For more sources. To see the original article, click at dafyomireview.com slash 526. And no, the 26 at the end was not planned. Thank you again for going on this journey with me. May Hashem continue to bless you with more clarity, more understanding, and more willpower to do the will of the Creator as you want to do your will. And as it says in our Mishnah in Avot, if you make his will into your will, he will make your will into his will. May Hashem bless each and every single one of you with a long and prosperous life full of Torah, Mitzvot, and Gmilut Chassadim. B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app full of Torah, lots of Kedusha, by uh, the shiurim that we do, myself, Rav Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the, uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chav Atlacha.